In today's video, I'm making a set of wooden resin coasters. This one is quite simple and I love the end result. So if you wanna make your own, stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. But first, you're gonna need a piece of tree branch. So however you have to get one, just get one. Any type of tree branch can work, but pine is something that's readily available in my area. Now the bark on this tree is kind of flaky and I like that because it kind of give a wild look to it. So I'm gonna prep these and hopefully the oven can dry them out and also kill off any potential bugs that's on the inside. Now you can cut these with a handsaw, but it's easier if you have a bandsaw or something like that, maybe your miter saw even to speed up the process. With the bark coming off, this didn't go quite as smooth as I would like it to, but I got enough off of it for this project. I'm gonna use a five inch PVC for the mold. And one of the things that was a challenge here was I'm using a 10 inch blade on my saw so I cannot go all the way through. I'd have to just cut what I can and then take a handsaw to make the rest of the cut. Now you can do this from start to finish with a handsaw but the best thing to do is mark a line on it so that you know where you're cutting. I make the rest of the cuts on the miter saw and I just turn the PVC pipe until I was able to cut through. I ended up trying two different methods on this project. For the first batch, I cut all the PVCs this way I can pop them easy from the mold. I then took some packing tape to close off the bottom section. For the second attempt, I took a piece of hardboard, cleaned that off, then I placed the PVC pipe down directly on top of it. I tried spreading silicone going around the base of it to hold it in place, but I never seemed to have any luck with already used silicone tubes. As I was squeezing the gun, it started coming out the opposite end. Now I wasn't gonna let this go to waste, so I cut the tube open and spread the silicone around the PVC pipe. After letting the silicone set up, I then took some paste wax and rubbed it inside, and this should make it easier to pop the mold. To get started, I'm gonna mix up about seven and a half ounces of resin, and I'll link that down in the video description. If you saw the other epoxy videos I have, those are a different type of epoxy mix. Those are for like countertops and artwork and different type of application. In this case, I'm casting, so I'm using a casting epoxy. In the other epoxy mix I use, it's a one to one ratio. In this one, it's a two to one ratio. Now these were the first set of coasters I created and I tried a different method as I mentioned before. So with this one, I poured the epoxy and let that layer get dry first. The following day, I put the pieces of wood on top of the resin. After mixing up another cup of resin, I then poured that into the mold. Shortly after pouring the resin, I realized some of the pieces was rising to the top and I figured that would be a little problematic. So that motivated me to start the second pour to see how that would turn out. Unlike the first attempt, I'm not gonna wait for the resin to set up. I'm just gonna put the pieces of wood on top of the wet pieces and let them dry inside to see if this is a better option. A quick way to remove the bubbles from the resin is using alcohol with 91% isopropyl. Now I should have did this before I put the wood in it because I'm sure there's probably air bubbles trapped under the pieces of wood. I'm gonna let this set up, then I pour another mix on top of it. I ordered a vacuum chamber and in the middle of this project, it actually came in. So I'm just gonna hook it up and give it a try and see if I can get the results that I'm hoping for. The main goal is to pull the bubbles out of the resin mix. This way I don't have to spray the alcohol or also use a heat gun to remove the bubbles. Now I assure you, you do not need this. I'm just experimenting right now, trying to learn how to use this vacuum chamber. So once I get a hang of it, I'll share what I learned in the future.
Removing the mold wasn't so bad. I took a handsaw then scored the side of it. Now the cut line didn't go all the way through and if I did it wouldn't be a big deal because I'm still going to sand the side down. The small cut I put on the side really helped. That gave the PVC just enough flex so I can pop out the coasters. Now it's kind of hard to see but if you look near the top you can see there's a sharp lip going around the edge. I kind of like that but I'm going to sand it down a little so that it's not as sharp. So now I'm going to demo the coasters from the first batch and right off the back like the tape took a little while to come off of it which is not a big deal but what really happened was the tape actually created these dents in it which now that's going to cause more work and you have to sand it down. Now these were a little easier to demold but the downfall to that is it now has a line in the side just in case you wasn't planning on sanding it down but we're going to sand these down so not a big deal. I added some color in two of the four coasters just so I can have different flavors. The coasters are crystal clear and I want to maintain that as much as possible so I'm going to take tape and put it across the surface this way I don't scratch it up as much. For me this is all an experiment but for you I would say just cover the entire top that way the tape can just be sanded off in the areas and you don't accidentally scratch the surface. Once I got around 800 grits, I then switched over to wet sanding. So after sanding them down and polishing them the best I could, I gotta tell you, I was not a fan of the all clear look so what I'm gonna do is now take some sandpaper and re-sand the outside of it. I'm really digging the hazy effect on the outside and I think with that being hazy on the outside it allowed the top to stand out by having that clear look when you look down into it. So to get the final look I used 120 grit to re-sand it down. Finally I sanded it all the way up to 320 grit. I was really happy with that and I like how soft it was to the touch. From my experiment, I got a better result by pouring the epoxy first, then placing the wood on top of it, then poured another layer of epoxy. For the second experiment, I placed the wood in the first pour. This one ended up with a lot of bubbles in it and of course you couldn't see it from the top. The wood has air in it and it will release it during the course of the cure time. For the first experiment, I babysitted this for the first couple hours and I sprayed alcohol to relieve the bubbles. Eventually a few came back, but not as many. The second mix I poured and left and as you can see the results there was a lot more bubbles that showed. I think the big winner is experiment number one. This has the better overall finish and I think you can take the plus from both to get something nice.